Can it really be that no one today is even slightly familiar with the Parvest Abellum Club Orchid, or known as in English, the tail of the white cow? The very same cow which was placed on the head of Patriarch Tikhon nearly a century ago of the Russian Orthodox Church. The Parvest, which is an integral part of the Russian Church history, clearly states that Saint Constantine was baptized by Pope Saint Sylvester shortly after the miraculous victory that Christ gave him over his pagan rival, Maxinitus, at the Battle of the Malevian Bridge, AD 312, and not on his deathbed by Eusebius of Nicomedia, as modern scholarship so likes to assert. This is the correct tale of the conversion of Constantine. For that service in gratitude, Constantine bestowed upon Saint Sylvester the dignity of wearing a white cow, which is symbolic of the purity of the Orthodox faith and the radiant third day resurrection of Christ. When the Church of Rome was ravaged by Abilinearism, a heresy, the then Pope commanded to do so by an angel of the Lord who appeared to him in a threatening dream, sent the white cow to Patriarch of Constantinople. Later a radiant youth, also an angel of the Lord, appeared to the then Patriarch of Constantinople and commanded that he send the cow onto the holy Russian land. For old Rome hath fallen away from the glory and the faith of Christ through pride and self-will. In New Rome, which is the city of Constantine, the Christian faith will likewise perish through the Muslim violence. While upon the third Rome, which is the Russian land, the grace of the Holy Spirit has shined forth. And there truly is the faith of the Christ glorified and honored more than anywhere else on earth. The tale of the white cow further predicts the establishment of a patriarch in Rus, and the great rank of patriarch will be given to the holy land of Rus in its time, and that nation will be called Radiant. Holy Rus. This prophecy was fulfilled in 1589, 136 years after the infidel Turks broke down the gates of Constantine the 11th in Constantinople. With the establishment of the Russian Patriarch, the white cow became the headgear of Russia's patriarchs, Saint Tikhon being the last to wear it legitimately. Thus, the third Rome was spiritually linked with the first by way of the second. And as much as a fourth Rome, there shall not be. The Pole Best informs us that at the end of the age, all Christian realms will come together into a single Russian Tsardom. The third Rome resurrected on account of the Orthodox faith, and the Lord will exalt the Russian Tsar over many nations. This prophecy also passed on to us, among others. Saint Seraphim Masarov, who also informs us that even the Antichrist will tremble at the mere mention of the Russian Tsar. We know, for example, according to the prophecies of Saint Theophon of Poltava, that in Russia, the Stasis, elders, used to say, through the will of the people, the monarchy and autocratic ruler will be restored. The Lord has foreshadowed the future Tsar. He will be a man of burning faith, of brilliant mind, and of iron will. First of all, he will bring about order in the Orthodox Church by removing all the false, heresy preaching and lukewarm hierarchs. And very many, indeed, almost all, with few exceptions, will be those removed by him, while new ones, true and steadfast hierarchs, will take their place. Through the female line, he will be from the lineage of the Romanovs. Russia will be a mighty state, but only for a short time. After that, the Antichrist will come into the world with all the horrors of the end, as described in the Apocalypse. Elsewhere, St. Fiofan states, O oh Russia, Russia, how terribly has she sinned before the loving kindness of the Lord. The Lord God favoured Russia, and he gave her that which had not given to a single other nation on earth. And this nation turned out to be so ungrateful. She left him, 
she rejected him. And it is therefore that the Lord has given her over to be tormented by devils. The devils took up their residence in the souls of men, and the nation of Russia became possessed literally, devil ridden. And all the horrible, terrible things that we hear about, what went on, and what continues to go on in Russia, all the sacrilege, all the militant atheism and theomonarchy, all of this stems from her being possessed by the demons. But through the inexpressible mercy of God, this possession will pass and the nation will be healed. The nation will turn to repentance, to faith that will occur, which none expects. Russia will be resurrected from the dead and the entire world will be astonished. Orthodoxy in her will be reborn and triumph. But that orthodoxy which had existed formerly will be no more. The great Stasi have said that Russia will be reborn, but the people themselves will restore the orthodox monarchy. A mighty Tsar will be placed upon the throne by God himself. He will be a great reformer. He will be strong in the orthodox faith. He will cast down the unfaithful hierarchs of the church. He himself will be an outstanding personality with a pure and holy soul. He will possess a strong will who will be born of the Romanov dynasty through the maternal line. He will be God's chosen one, obedient to the Lord in all things. He will transform Siberia. But this Russia will exist only for a very short time. Soon thereafter will come to pass that which the Apostle John speaks in his apocalypse. And this is what the book of Revelation talks of. An empire that once was and is to come Again, an empire born from heaven onto earth, reminiscent of earth with the heavenly abode. This is why Rome is so important to us, the eternal Zardom of heaven on earth, the eternal Zardom of God, the vertical authority upon the earth, of Christ himself, represented in the majesty of a king a high priest king that would do Christ's will and a governmental authority that is a sacrament of the anointing of an emperor the governmental head that protects serves worships God through his church in unison with the church the double-headed ego that is both east and west as one both patriarch and king as one both state and church as one. This is why the satanic forces targeted the Eastern Roman Empire from Rome to Constantinople to Moscow. To destabilize Rome was to destroy Christianity, was to destroy Christendom. The last emperor, the emperor of Christendom, was the target of the Antichrist forces. For without a Tsar, without an Emperor, Christendom can be toppled. The Satanic forces know this. To only look at what is important, you only need to look at what is attacked from the demonic. And that which was taken away has succumbed and preludes to today and as what we see is a reminiscent shadow of what once was. With no protective governmental authority, working in unison with the religious authority. We have a devastation, a Christendom, a Europe that is no longer Christian, a world that looks to the Christian faith as irrational, unprovable, and a waste of time for those who would rather do better with their own time, not knowing the truth and the reality of what is hidden behind the curtain, the veil, that's in front of them. But the actual guard of Christ will come again. God will re-establish his kingdoms, his kings, right under the noses of those who sought to destroy her. The church, the Tsar, the emperor, the ruler of Christendom will be re-established. And a great peace 
come upon the earth when Rome is re-established with the kingdoms, the emperor of all Christendom. This is why God blessed Rome to be successively succeeded by nation states time and time again. For without Rome, without a governmental authority, Christendom would not exist. As God has always anointed a ruler who would always protect his Israel, his church, he would always use his Davids for the glory of his kingdom. In this time and times and times to come, 